Hello everybody, Craig back at you out again on a wonderful day out and about just enjoying uh, my time on the bike. As you can see today we are out on the 2014 Honda Valkyrie. Have that out and about and uh, what I wanted to do today was just go over my experiences. We'll call this a two year review of the Honda Valkyrie. As many of you know, it's a 2014 Honda Valkyrie. I bought this in actually 2018. Uh, it was a brand new leftover, uh, so I picked it up new. So I've had it two years. I haven't put a lot of miles on it because my other bike is a Honda Goldwing, so I ride that uh, probably twice as much as I ride this bike. So for the two years I've had this bike, I put a little over 2,000 miles on it. So I wanted to go over some of the pros and cons of uh, having this bike. And I'll try to remember, there's no particular order, like this is the number one pro, this is the number one con. As they kind of come to my mind, I'll uh, I'll let you guys know, um, you know, what I think about the, what I think about the bike. So, um, first thing that I like about the bike, I do like the styling of the bike. Uh, to me, the bike looks sharp. It is really a, a polarizing look to the bike. It's either people love it or they hate it. Um, I am a big fan of it. Uh, I think it just looks different. It looks different than anything out there. And so when people see the bike, naturally their first reaction is, oh, what is that? If they're, you know, if they're not familiar with the Valkyrie, you know, that's their first reaction. Um, and I just, I, I like the look. I am uh, a little particular to the color black. I think the black Valkyrie looks better, in my opinion, looks better than the blue Valkyrie and looks better than the maroon one, the red one. Those are the colors they kind of came out with in uh, 2014, 2015 uh, for this bike. So I like the look. Um, uh, I like the fact that it's, uh, it's uh, um, liquid cooled, uh, so you don't have to deal with any of the overheating issues or the bike getting warm on you. Uh, so that's really never been much of an issue on that. Uh, I do like, a, one thing I really like is this digital display that we have on the bike. It, and I don't know if the GoPro does it justice, but when you're riding it, it's very easy to see the display, no matter what time of, uh, of day it is, no matter how the sun is hitting it. Some of these digital displays, if the sun hits it at a, you know the right angle, it's it looks washed out. Not with this, I can always see, you know my you know my speed. I like the digital speedometer, uh, big uh, big numbers. I always see the speed. It gives me my uh, my speed naturally, my odometer, uh, the time, um, my fuelage, my fuel gauge. One thing, one drawback to this speedometer is I wish it had a gear indicator, which it doesn't. Uh, the bike does have, like a lot of bikes, has a neutral gear light. So when I'm in when I'm in neutral, you know, the light will pop on and it'll, I'll get a green end. Uh, but I have no idea if it's I'm in fourth gear, third gear, second gear. Uh, the bike does have five gears. Now, I know for a lot of experienced bikers, um, and even, you know, myself with a little bit more experience than I'm getting, I can sort of tell which gear I'm in depending on the RPMs and the speed that I'm going, but I still would have liked to have had a gear indicator so uh, you can look down and you can, um, you can easily see. Um, so that's one drawback, I would say. I would have, I would have made, I would have liked to see that on the bike. Um, other things uh you know that I, I i like about the bike i do like that it's uh it is a cruiser it is just it's made for doing the kind of things i'm doing right now just out and about on the day riding around drawback i don't think this is not a touring bike and and it really gets down to when you're purchasing a bike um and i wish i would have done this i i actually did a lot of research i wish i would have done a little bit more research um but when you're when you go to buy a bike, you really got to take in mind what your goal is. What do you want to do with that bike? Um, do you want to zip up and down on the highway? You want to go as fast as you can go. Um, I don't recommend it, but maybe a sport bike might be in your uh, uh, in your future. Or if you're, you know, let me say a better example. If you want to do track days, you know, like I want to take this bike out to the track and and really learn to lean it over and all that other stuff. Um, then you know, a sport bike is what you want to get. Uh, I sort of knew that I wanted to do some touring. I wanted to go on some long distance trips. A nice boat out in the water. Uh, I wanted to go on some long distance trips. 
Uh, so, but I, I got, I love this bike, so I purchased this bike, but this is not the bike I would take for that. Um, because drawback, the seat, the stock seat is not that comfortable. Um, when I had the stock seat, I could probably go 50 miles before, you know, my butt started hurting. And I know a lot of people, you know, I think it's the way with a lot of bikes. With this bike, 50 miles tops is what I could get out of it before it felt really felt like I was sitting on a board. So what I did with this bike was I did a seat modification and had a Russell Daylong seat. Um, but on. it's really the only mod that I've done to this bike um, because I knew even cruising, I wanted to be able to go, say, in the in, in a course of a day, you know, 100, 150 miles without having to worry about, you know, I'm just in constant pain because of the seat. Uh, but if you're the type of person you're buying the bike because you just want to zip around to your local bike night, um, you're when, you, when you're riding, you're going 10, 15 miles here and there, you know, before you get off the bike, you're not really going more than 20 miles at any one particular clip then I think the stock seat is, uh, is gonna be good for you. Another thing, uh, very good uh, positive aspect of this bike. This bike has a lot of torque. The, the engine is 1,833 cc's. Uh, and this bike takes, it takes nothing to get it rolling. Um, and you get spoiled because in first gear, you really don't even have to master the friction zone. You can, you can just let off the clutch real easy and the bike will start rolling forward and you won't stall out. That's just got that much torque to it. Um, in fact, with this bike, it has so much torque to it. And I'd be interested for you that you Valkyrie owners, um, what I found is a lot easier to do. I like to just start in second gear. You know, if I'm at a stop, you know, it's, it's a lot easier for me to uh, go forward from second gear. In fact, I'll like show you right now. I'm at a stop sign right now. It's easier for me just to go here. Now I'm in second gear, not in first gear, because I've noticed with this bike in first gear, you know, as soon as you hit the throttle, you know, you got to shift it to second, you know? So I get a little more, I don't know, a little more room. I don't even know if the right terminology is the second gear. So, so much torque on this bike that I, you know, I usually stay in second gear, even when I come to a stop or when I get rolling, I'll go to second instead of first. That's a, you know, a positive thing about this bike. Another aspect about this bike, uh, and I really can't even comment on it, uh, is, but I'll say it's a positive. This bike um, has a LED headlight and LED taillights. So that's a positive. Now, how well they work, and let me back up. I think any bike that's been made at, from 2014 on, 2015, they should all have LEDs. I don't know why uh, manufacturers are, are putting out bikes that still have halogen um, headlights. It's just everything should be LEDs on, uh, on motorcycles for as far as the, the, the uh, headlamp and your tail lamps and your turn signals and all that other stuff. Um, but now getting back to the headlamp, it's got one big headlamp. Um, I can't really tell you how well it works at night, only because I don't ride this bike at night. Uh, where I live, uh, there's a lot of deer. Um, that, in fact, just the other day in my yard uh, at dusk, I had eight deer. I was to count it. You know, I live. I call it quasi country, and I had eight deer in my backyard. So they're moving at night. So. Um, even now, it's uh, one of my out. It's about 10 to 7. You're getting close. You're getting close to that that uh, that dusk hour where they're going to start moving. So I try to have the bike uh, back home and in the garage before it gets dark. So I can't really tell you how well the the LED works when it comes down to um, this bike. Just because my plan is I always choose to get this bike back home before it's dark. Another quirk I would say concerning this bike is the mirrors. Um, not bad, just quirky. It's just like you can't, for whatever reason, maybe it's just me, I can't ever get them adjusted exactly the way that I want them. They're kind of difficult to adjust. They look okay on the bike aesthetically. I don't think they hurt the bike, but it's just a little bit weird to adjust these uh, mirrors. Seems like one of them I got where I want, the left one I got where I want, the right one, no matter how much I kind of play with it, 
I don't know, it just doesn't line up the way that I, you know, that I would want it to line up. So, you know, that's a, a quirky issue. Other thing about the bike, again, it has a lot of power. We talked about that. A couple of things that I wish um, it would have had, or at least I would have gotten. My bike does not have ABS. I do think they came out with a ABS version of this bike, but when I went to buy it, you couldn't get one. They have a, apparently they'd all been sold. But if there is an ABS version, which I think there is, um, this is not the ABS version. So again, with motorcycle, I'm a big proponent of ABS on motorcycles if you can get it. Uh, another thing that uh, this bike, I wish it had, but it didn't have is a slipper clutch. Um, so it's very easy if you're not paying attention to lock up the back tire on this bike. So that's one thing I would say, if you've got a Valkyrie, be very, and you don't have ABS and uh, and because you don't have a slipper clutch, be very careful on how you operate this bike. Because you can, if you're not careful, you will lock up that back tire, which is, you know, dangerous. So that's an area that I wish, uh, you know, had a slipper clutch and that all, all the Valkyries, I think for the price tag, they should have all come standard with ABS. It doesn't make any sense that uh, their initial price was so high, but they didn't all come with ABS. So all in all, I will say I've had really 2,000 um, trouble-free miles on this bike. It really was, uh, hasn't given me any issues. Again, I've got a little over 2,000 miles on it after having it uh, uh, for a couple of years. No issues uh, whatsoever. One of the things I do have to, uh, you know, do to this bike, and I actually I just realized it the other day. So I need to get some new tires for this bike. and. The reason I say that again, it's a 2014, it's got the original tires on it. Even though I only have 2,000 miles on it, I'm concerned about the, the dry rot. So, you know, we're going six years on a pair of tires. Even though there's plenty of tread, uh, I don't want to run the risk of uh, them dry rotting. And from what I've read online today, you're right, I'm just right at the, the point where I really should be looking at getting new tires. I saw anywhere from, I don't even know if this is right, chime in if you have, if you got better information on dry rotting of tires but uh, from what I read online it said six to ten years uh, is the longest that you want to let you know a pair of tires uh, operate with a pair of tires even if they're even if you haven't driven them because of uh, you know the ability for them to rot so uh, I'll be looking to get some tires negative thing I'll say that brings this up is that I don't think there is a great selection at all for tires for this bike. I think you're kind of locked in. There might be one or two manufacturers that make, uh, if I remember correctly, that make the, the tire sizes for this bike. I think the back tire. So anyway, the tires can be a little bit expensive because of the fact that you don't have a, a ton of people or a ton of manufacturers that make tires for this bike. One thing you guys will uh, notice, I'll show you a, uh, some video here. Um, I did some damage to the bike, I uh, dropped it. So scrapped, scratched up the chrome on, uh, on my exhaust. And uh, from my understanding, you can't really, there's nothing you really can do to get it fixed or just maybe re-chrome it. They do sell a replacement part for it, um, an OEM you know, part that I could buy. Uh, when I looked online, it was like 500 bucks. It looks like it's a bolt-on, you know, just take take the old part off, bolt the new one on, and that's what it looks like. Um, so I'm going back and forth on whether I should replace that. You know, just, I look at it, I don't really like the scratches, but then I've seen some other people, you know, I talked to some other people and they said, hey, you know, that those are battle scars, keep them. Uh, keep it on the bike. So I don't know. Um, I'll see what I'll do. You know, maybe when it gets to be cold again and. I'm looking for a winter project to do. Maybe I'll, you know, pull it in the garage and then do it then if I even, if I even decide to do it. Um, that happened a year ago and I haven't gotten it fixed yet. So, um, but I would say that's the, you know, the flaw that I have on the bike is, or what I did to the bike was uh, not paying attention and dropped it and, sc and scratched up that, uh, that chrome pretty good. But uh, I will say uh, to sum things up, it is a great bike. If you are if you're on the fence or you're thinking about getting a Honda Valkyrie, go right ahead and get one. I mean, I don't think you're going to have any complaints about the bike. Um, just keep in mind, like I said at the very beginning of this uh, of this video, um, just know what you want the function of the bike to be. 
if you're planning on going on long trips uh, and you have the Valkyrie, you're probably gonna have to make some modifications. You're gonna have to add a windshield, you're gonna have to add some kind of bags. Um, this bike doesn't have any kind of highway pegs, so not that the bikes, a lot of bikes come with highway pegs, they don't, but you're probably gonna wanna add the highway pegs. For me with this bike, and this is just my personal opinion, adding all those things to turn this bike into more of a touring bike takes away from the look of the bike. I just, I've seen, I know people have Valkyries with windshields they've added to, added to them. What are we doing here? Okay, I know uh, people have had uh, added windshields to their Valkyries because you know they're gonna they go on the highway a lot or they added bags. I, I just don't like the way they look. I like the way the stock Valkyrie, you know, looks. Other than you know my modification of the seat, I like that better. So, um, but if you're only gonna have one bike, you know, if you're only gonna have one bike, which a lot of people they, they you only got one bike, and you wanna and you wanna make it a touring bike by adding those those items. It definitely can be a touring bike. It definitely can. You know, you can. You, there's people that go long distances uh, with the Valkyrie. So, anyway, I, getting back to, you're probably not going to find a new one. I don't think. You know, again, they're the newest versions. I think they just sold them in 2014, 2015. So it's going to be hard to find a new one now. But if you can find one and it's got low mileage on it and uh, it's been taken care of, I, I don't think you're going to have any regrets whatsoever um, to buying this bike and, and owning this bike. It is a great bike. So. So again, my two year review, again, only 2000 miles. For those of you that have Valkyries that put way more miles on than you, than I have, please feel to comment on, you know, and put your experiences. Are, are there some things that popped up, you know, when you got later on with more mileage on the bike that we all as Valkyrie owners should be uh, aware of, kind of have in the back of our mind. Um, or if things are great, just let us know. Hey, it's still great. You got, you know, 10,000 miles on my bike. It's still great. So, all right. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Um, and thank you for much, so much for watching the channel. And I want everyone to have a wonderful and a blessed day. Take care, everybody.